a. Let f of x be equal to minus 1 minus x if x is less than minus 1. 0 if minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 0. And x squared minus 4 if 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. Sketch a graph of f and write down the domain and range of f. Well, it says to sketch a graph, which means I can draw a graph, but I don't have to draw an accurate one. It just needs to be generally the right shape, and all of the important features need to be labelled with coordinates. So first, I'll definitely need an x-axis and a y-axis. So there's the y-axis, and there's the x-axis. And now I need to start putting some points in. So... We need the places where the function changes its definition. They're important points uh, to put on the graph. So x is equal to minus 1. That's a place where the graph changes its definition. x is equal to 0. I'll leave that one off. It's the origin. We know where that is. x is equal to 1. And x is equal to 2. They're all the actual values of x that are mentioned in the definition of f. Now I can draw each part of the graph separately knowing where each part is now. So first, let's do uh, this part here. Minus 1 minus x if x is less than minus 1. So, minus 1 minus x, that would be a line. It would have slope negative 1 because of uh, this number just here. It's a minus x. And it would have y-intercept minus 1. And if we put in, uh, put in x equals negative 1, we'll get minus 1 minus minus 1, which will give us 0. So my function looks like this. It's not defined at minus 1, and it goes up like this with slope minus 1. So that's what the graph looks like in that part of the plane. So let's go to the next one. 0 if minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 0. So that would be y equals 0. So it's 0 here. And it's 0 along the axis. But not all that way, is it? It's 0 from uh, minus 1 to 0. So only this bit here. And it's not defined at x equals 0 because of this strictly less than sign here. So that's that part of the graph. Let's move on to the next bit. x squared minus 4 if 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. So that means we're only interested in this part just here. Now, x squared minus 4 would be a parabola. Uh, and it, let's see what that would look like. x squared would look like this, something like that. And x squared minus 4 would be pretty much the same, only we'd shift it down 4, so something like that. And I just need to figure out exactly where the graph goes between 1 and 2. So we can figure that out. We'll draw... Well, we'll actually do some calculations to figure that out. If x is equal to 1, then x squared minus 4 is equal to 1 squared minus 4, which is negative 3. Which is negative 3. If x is equal to 2, then x squared minus 4 is equal to 2 squared minus 4, which is equal to 0. So, that would mean that um, at 1, I have negative 3, and actually is equal to negative 3 because of this less than or equal to sign. So let's just pop that in on the y-axis there, negative 3. And at 2, it's 0. So here, y equals 0. And being a parabola as I drew before, it would have to do this. 
So that's what my graph looks like. The final part would be to label it and so my graph is y is equal to f of x. Well next it says to write down the domain and range of f and we don't have to do any actual calculations we just have to write it down uh, and we can do that therefore from our graph. What's the domain mean then? Well, the domain is all the values of x I'm allowed to put into my function f, so all the places where it's actually defined. And we can get that from our graph by looking at the places uh, where there is function. So where there is a piece of the function above or below um, the x-axis at that spot. So if we have a look at each bit separately, for this bit here, that's this part of the x-axis and there's function there. So my domain so far would be from minus infinity to minus 1. And that's obvious from the definition as well, it's defined here. And then the next part of my graph is here. And that's from minus 1 to 0. And it's defined there as well, but not at 0 because there's an open circle here. So that would match with this part of the definition. And you can see from minus 1 to 0 is defined there. So we'll add that bit on from minus 1 to 0. Oh, sorry, square brackets around that minus 1 because it's actually defined at an equal to there. Okay, and then the next part of my function is here from one to negative uh, from one to two, and if we have a look at our graph there, we can see from one to two, yes, it is defined. There's graph above uh, well below that part of the axis, and all the rest of the x-axis is that the plane is empty in these regions. There's no graph there, so it's not defined in those places. So we can add on uh, this last bit here. We can union from 1 to 2. But if you have a look, um, these two sections here join together. So my domain is actually from minus 1 to 0 and from 1 to 2. So from minus 1 to 0, sorry, minus infinity to 0, sorry about that. from minus infinity to 0, union from 1 to 2. That's my domain. Excellent, let's do the range next. The range of f. Well, the range is all of the values um, of f that my function produces, so every y value. So we can do it in the same way that we do the domain by looking for by uh, looking for all the places on the y-axis that have graph on either side. Again, we can do it for each part of the graph separately. So let's have a look at this part. So now we're interested in what happens on the y-axis. So here, we cover the whole of the positive y-axis. So the first piece of my range is from 0 to infinity. 
that's the part that's produced by this first part of the graph. The second bit, which is here, is just zero. So we can union zero. And the third part is here which is from minus 3 up to 0, including both. So we would union uh, this bit from minus 3 up to 0. But of course those three pieces of the y-axis join together. If you watch, you can see that it's defined for every y from here to here. So that there is my um, range and is equal to from negative 3 to infinity. So there's my domain and my range. Now I'm ready for part B. B. Consider the real valued function g of x which is equal to the square root of x plus 4 all over x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1 find the largest possible domain for G. So the domain of G would be uh, the X's that I'm allowed to put into the function and still have it be defined. And we want the largest possible de domain, so we only want to exclude any places where it's actually undefined. So let's have a look at each piece of it first. First let's have a look at this uh, X squared plus 4 just here, this root X squared plus 4. The square root of X plus 4 Sorry, not x squared plus 4, root x plus 4. The square root of x plus 4 um, is only going to be defined if the x plus 4 is positive or 0. We can't square root a negative number for a real valued function. So it is defined for x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So my domain so far is x is greater than, all the x's greater than or equal to negative 4. Then I need to look at this other part here. This part here is on the bottom of the fraction. And that's only going to be defined if the bottom's not 0. We're not allowed to divide by 0. So g is going to be undefined. So g is undefined if the denominator is 0. So x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So we just solve that and see when it's undefined. So that would be x squared plus 1 is 0 or x squared minus 1 is 0 which would be x squared is negative 1 or x squared is equal to 1. x squared is negative 1 has no solutions if x is a real number and x would be equal to plus or minus 1. So that's when it's undefined. It's undefined when x is equal to plus or minus 1. So my domain must be this. The domain of g must be from minus 4 upwards, because that's when it's defined. So minus 4 to infinity. Without plus and minus 1, because that's where it's undefined. Like that. And we can write that in interval notation if we want, um, by drawing a graph of it. So here's my number line. Here's minus 4 and minus 1 and plus 1. And let's see, from minus 4, including, up to infinity, without 1, uh, well, without minus 1 or 1. And so that would be equal to from minus 4 to minus 1, and from minus 1 to 1, and from 1 to infinity. And that's the domain of G, the largest possible domain.